In this video, I will explain four common scenarios to get the most out of your YubiKey. I have a pretty comprehensive playlist of videos on my channel completely dedicated to using these little hardware keys to protect your digital life. Since I have been using these keys in my personal life for about a decade, and I have started partnering with Yubico to make this educational series of videos, I still get a lot of questions that are very particular, usually delving into specific use cases. Now, I would love to have all the time in the world to answer every single question, but while I cannot answer all specific scenario questions, I can share best practices and dive into some of the common scenarios that I see y'all talking about in my comments. This video is sponsored by Yubico and it is a part of the security series. So make sure to check out the rest of my playlist, which is linked down below. And if you do wanna delve into upgrading your own account security, you can go over to my link, which is yubi.co slash Shannon 2024 to automatically get $5 off a YubiKey 5 NFC. Now I have already explained how to choose which one to buy, how to find out if your accounts are supported, and how to set up a YubiKey as a multi-factor hardware key, a pass key, or a replacement to six digit codes. But how do you make hardware keys a part of your lifestyle? Well, if you haven't seen any of those videos, my sponsor for this episode, Yubico, makes these YubiKeys. With data privacy getting more and more important, I use YubiKeys to protect my online accounts. Whenever we log in, we usually get six digit codes either sent over text message, or maybe you had to download an app that generates some codes for you that you have to type in. I am sure that you've seen them. Those texts kind of look like this, or they might look like this. <laughs> Those codes are vulnerable though. They can be stolen by a really swift attacker snooping on your text, or you could be tricked into typing those codes into fake websites. Hundreds of websites already know this, so they have upgraded to letting you use these little hardware keys instead. And yes, they do look like flash drives. I know they're really cute, but they are solely used for security. Instead of using one of those codes, you plug this device in and then you tap on it. There's no codes to memorize. There's no codes to steal, no codes to type in. These use special computer code handshakes with websites. The website you use it on verifies that you have the right key and the key verifies that you are on the right website. The two do not work together unless both of those things are correct. So to use it, all you have to do is plug this into your phone or your laptop or you tap it with NFC to easily log in. There's no more messing up those six digit codes when you type them in or waiting for a text message to come in with your one-time code. I use YubiKeys absolutely anytime they are supported because they make logins a lot faster and they are more secure. And since it is a one-time purchase, it's way cheaper than getting your identity stolen. I have a deal just for my viewers. You can go over to my link, which is yubi.co slash Shannon 2024 to automatically get $5 off a YubiKey 5 NFC. And make sure to watch my full 2FA playlist to learn everything you need to know about these handy little keys. That's yubi.co slash Shannon 2024 for $5 off. And thank you so much to Yubico for sponsoring this episode. Now let's go ahead and talk more about using YubiKeys. I am featuring some of you in this episode because you have been super, super engaged in my comment section. So let's answer your questions. First, we have at FastBobby504 who says, I have two keys. They work fine, but they are never around when I need them. I don't carry keys and the way these things are built, I don't think they would fare well hanging on a keychain. So what do people do with their YubiKeys? How do you make sure that you have them with you wherever you go. That has been my struggle since buying them. Now, similarly is a comment from at Chickadee that says, I thought YubiKeys must be used every time you log in. That's why they have the nano keys that you leave plugged in. Say if you are working from home all day. No, am I wrong? Okay, so both of these questions have to do with convenience of hardware keys. If you need them to log in, doesn't that mean you have to remember to carry them with you all the time? And 
Are they durable? So first off, let's go ahead and discuss durability. Now, in my experience, all of my YubiKeys still work, but that is mainly because I don't carry them with me all the time. More on that in a bit. And when I do, I protect the main dongle. Now, YubiKeys do not have any moving parts. There's no battery inside of them. They are relatively water resistant and they can be thrown around. I have a friend who put his through the laundry and it was fine. I don't advise that and I would not advise is crushing them with a hammer, like take care of your things. Let's be realistic here. Durability tests are hilarious whenever you watch YouTubers do it, but please, please take care of your purchases. <laughs> with all that said, I would recommend buying one with future proofing in mind. So the ones that I usually use are going to be the ones that have USB-C, which is compatible with all of my current devices. Now, when I do need to carry mine, I usually put them in a zippered compartment in a wallet or in my purse, separate from coins or other objects that could poke the inner pieces of this little port. I will slip one into one of the card slots in my wallet, or I'll store it in a little coin purse all by itself. It kind of just depends on what I'm carrying that day. If I'm just running around with my jeans on, then I'll put it in that little jean pocket. Now, if you do not have that option, there are a whole slew of third-party cases on retail sites like Amazon and Etsy that work perfectly for these little guys. Other people have thought about this and they have made these really cute like 3D printed cases. There are a lot of really nice looking cases. I've seen leather ones online, these little holders for your YubiKey. So you can complement your personal aesthetic and also get a protective case for your YubiKey as well. Now second, how often do you need your YubiKeys to log into your accounts? That totally depends on the websites or the apps where they are implemented. Do you need them every single time you log in? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, and here's why. Say you just bought a new phone and you are setting it up and you have to log into all of your apps. Now sometimes you can just transfer your accounts from your old phone, but those apps may not recognize the new phone, so they require you to re-authenticate. That includes plugging in, like so, or tapping your YubiKey to the back of your phone using NFC as a passkey or for multi-factor authentication. This registers your new phone as a recognized device with that app. But you use that new phone every single day and each time you open that app, it already knows and it recognizes your device. Therefore, unless you revoke that new device or if it gets lost or stolen, then the application is just going to assume that you are who you say you are, especially if you already unlocked your phone with biometrics. Now, if the app required you to input your email and password, then plug in a YubiKey every single time you open that app, well, nobody would want to use it. For convenience sake and thanks to cookies, these apps keep you logged in. Cookies are like little device identifiers that are used by apps and websites to keep you logged in. You can control your cookies on your devices. If you look at your browser settings, you can delete cookies or you can customize how long they are accessible. Now, if you consistently log into your accounts on the same personal devices, on the same wireless networks, the same geolocations, or at the same IP addresses, then chances are those apps are not gonna require you to re-authenticate over and over and over again. They are going to remember you until that session expires, at which time then yes, you would need to re-authenticate with your YubiKey. Now, if you change locations, if the app or the websites that you use make cookies expire often, or if your logins look suspicious for some reason, then yes, you would probably need to re-authenticate with your YubiKey more often. Okay, but how do you know when your session is going to expire? Now some, like social media networks, very rarely expire your logins. Some other ones, like banks or government sites, make you re-authenticate after a shorter amount of time, and it totally depends on the website in question. Now, the way I usually figure this out is whenever I set up a new phone, I will log into all of my accounts that day. Then over the next few weeks, I'll make a mental note of any websites or apps that require me to re-authenticate. 
If I am worried that my session is about to expire, say right before I go on vacation, and if I want to leave my YubiKey at home, then I will just hop onto that app, I'll log out or revoke my session manually, and then I log back in with my YubiKey so that the session is fresh and it's brand new. From at NipDog on YouTube, how do you actually revoke a lost YubiKey? And they continued, what if on a YubiKey you had all of your accounts, Microsoft, Google, credit card, banking, website logins, other financial and medical websites, and then suddenly you lost or misplaced or even stolen, you got your YubiKey stolen, worst case, how could you revoke the primary or lost YubiKey with the backup YubiKey and make sure that whomever has the stolen YubiKey cannot or will not have access to any of your accounts? Now, revoking a lost YubiKey is super easy as long as you set up more than one YubiKey from the get-go, or if a website does not allow for multiple keys, you saved your backup codes. If you only have one YubiKey, which I do not suggest, I recommend buying multiple keys, two at minimum, so that you always have a backup key. As you go through your accounts, setting up your YubiKey as a pass key or an MFA key, you will be prompted during setup to print out or copy a list of backup keys. Now these are five to 10 randomly generated numbers that are used to allow you to gain access to your account in the event that you cannot use your multi-factor authentication option. If you lose your hardware key, just grab your list of backup codes out of your safe or wherever you save them, type one of them in, and then go to your security settings, find your 2FA or MFA or pass key settings page. It might be listed differently depending on the website and choose to revoke or remove the current hardware key. Now I did want to make a note about backup keys. Oh, do you live in Tornado Alley? <laughs> well, some of us do, or some of us have. Have. Maybe you live in like earthquake or hurricane country, definitely been there too. Maybe you could store them at a trusted friend's house in another state. Oh no, did the backup codes get stolen or destroyed? Keep two copies. Those YubiKeys or those backup codes, they will be no use to somebody who also does not know what they go to or whose account they belong to. So do not write your login credentials next to your backup codes. The only way that somebody can use a backup code is if they already typed in your username and password to get to the MFA entry page. So keep that information private. Now you can totally use a backup code to log in and generate a brand new list of backup codes so that the current ones expire and are burned. They can only be used once per code. If a website did not give you backup codes when you first set up your YubiKey, First, you might have missed the prompt, so you may need to re-add your YubiKey so the backup codes are shown to you again. Second, the website may give you an option to set up a backup means of login, like authenticating via an app on your phone, by email, or via an SMS text. Now, SMS, as we all know, is the most vulnerable to phishing and exploits, so I recommend sticking with more secure options if they are available. You may also have the option Option to add a second YubiKey. Now, if able, I recommend setting up two YubiKeys. Some sites do allow this from the get-go, some do not. Not all accounts will be accessible in the same way. So if your primary YubiKey gets lost, use your secondary key to log in like usual, then go into your settings and delete, remove, or revoke the primary key. Now, this is especially important for the primary accounts that you had listed, so make sure that you always have a secondary means of authentication in order to log in. Now, one thing I think is really important to note is that nothing is stored on the YubiKey itself. So let's say that you lose your key and somebody finds it on the ground and they have some kind of ill intent and they want to try and use it. Well, they don't know what apps or services the key is actually set up with, and they also likely do not know your username and password, especially if they found this thing in like a random parking lot somewhere. So they are not going to be able to access your accounts just if they pick up your YubiKey on the ground. It's basically useless for them. With that said though, if somebody did pick up your YubiKey and they happen to have your username and password too, which they should not, nobody should know that information, then you probably wanna beat them to 
into the punch and log into your accounts with your backup key or your backup codes and go ahead and revoke your original primary YubiKey. At Barry Shaw 1972 says, if you set up 2FA with Google Authenticator's app and you also add YubiKeys, is it better? Or should you just use one method? If signing into a new device, which method will Google use to authenticate if you have two choices? So with two-factor authentication, there are certainly different methods that you can choose depending on the website that you set it up on. In this example, we will talk about Google. Now Google does support pass keys nowadays, and I have made a video about switching to pass keys, but if you still wanna use your YubiKey for MFA or multi-factor authentication, where you still have to input your username and password to log in, then your MFA method on a second screen, you do have several different options. Google lets you choose from several different methods, and it does not restrict you to use just one or another. So should you use the YubiKey or use a six-digit code, or should you use both? So first off, whenever I sign in, my Google account defaults to asking me to plug in a YubiKey to authenticate. I have my account set up with multiple YubiKeys, so I just use whichever one is nearby and convenient at that time. Optionally, if you only have one YubiKey, key or you want to create a third authentication method, you can choose to have a six digit code generated within an app on your phone. Should you use the app based authenticator as a backup tool for your Google account? Well, are you targeted in hacks? Are attackers trying to gain access to your accounts often? Are you being followed? <laughs> Basically, you need to determine what your threat model is. I don't know how vulnerable your specific situation is, so it really comes down to you analyzing your own life and determining if using an app-based authenticator will put you in a vulnerable position. From Z1KK or Zik, so am I understanding this correctly? You need to set up each account for every YubiKey you intend to use interchangeably. Basically set up 2FA twice every time in most instances. Well, TLDR, yes. <laughs> the long version, yes. <laughs> Many websites will allow you to set up more than one YubiKey, and when you do, you are creating an alternate method to log in. This saves you in the event you lost your main key. It's the same as we do with house keys. You generally have more than one created, so everybody who lives there can also unlock the door. Or if you live alone, you probably have a spare key in case your regular one gets lost. That way you can open the door, get in your house, and then call a locksmith and have them change the lock. Now, same thing with YubiKeys. If you lose your first one, you can use the spare to unlock your account. And once you are in, you would go to your security settings, i.e. the locksmith, and revoke the original key or change that lock. Your second key will still work if the website is set up to allow more than one hardware key. Each of them will be considered a different key, not a copy of the first one, so your spare can then become your primary key, and you can grab yourself a new spare, adding the new spare to your account whenever it comes in. Now, if a website only allows you to set up one key, then choose an alternate method that best works for your lifestyle. If a website only allows you to use 2FA app-based authentication, then use the Yubico app and this awesome hack that I walked through in this episode, which is shown on the screen here. In that episode, I show you how you can use the QR code when setting up an app-based authentication to actually connect it to a hardware-based key. And I explain how you can use that QR code to set up multiple keys. It's pretty cool. Now I realize that some of this information might be a little redundant based on my previous videos, but it also goes to show that security is complicated. Security is hard to implement and it takes time to really get the tool set up for your lifestyle. This video was all about understanding the relationship that you have with your security tool and best using it for your own security model.